The Great Dane Tom Christensen is well known as Mr. Le Mans, and rightly so, with a breathtaking six consecutive victories and possibly an unreachable nine in total. But he is also fondly recognized in North America as Mr. Sebring. For me, always the first race of the season. It's hot, sunny Florida. The circuit is tough and it's grueling when you get into the sunset and the grip really comes down with the rubber on the concrete as it builds up over the week. Over the years with Audi, Sebring become a circuit which where you developed and you made sure that you had that durability of a race car. And sometimes after the 12 hours, we simply just put it in the tents and we came back the next uh, morning or Monday morning and we would then do another 12 or 24 hours on the cars again. That was, that was something nice to have experienced and, and to have been a part of. Christensen's passion for racing is unquestionable and even after hanging up his race helmet in 2014, he still has words of wisdom for the old World War II Air Force Base. Sebring Circuit, when speaking about that, as Le Mans, they have to be careful not to change too much because they should stay just like they are and just take good care of them. There's far too many circuits who are developed into too clinical, too blah, blah, blah. But the drivers want it like this. They, they like it like these. That's why they love to do well at, at races like Sebron and Le Mans, or at least I can say that has been for my career. In sports car racing, you're only as good as the teammates around you. And with Alan McNish and Dindo Capello alongside, they opened the floodgates for an era of Audi dominance. Tom and I drove together many times and with Dindo Capello, we were teammates and it actually started here. It started the discussions in 05 because Tom and I duked it out in the champion Audi R8s. I have been blessed with great teammates which in the cars over the years were coming in with that, not only the passion but also the determination, concentration and respect in that uh, you need to, to win race. You can never overdo it. You need to push it, but not overdo it. And that is always a fine line. With Tom and I, we spent so many hours away from the circuit. And also, I have to say with Dindo Capello, because Dindo, at the beginning, especially when he was still racing, he was, you know, the one that I would have said gelled the two of us together and made that, uh, that little triumvirate. We didn't always win, but we always had a fantastic time. And, and we, we had the bad luck, the good luck, the great racing and a great atmosphere uh, over, over the years. Tom Christensen's sixth victory saw him inducted into the Sebring Hall of Fame this year. Not only was he added to a prestigious list of names like Sterling Moss and Derek Bell, but the Great Dane even had a corner named after him. It's absolutely correct that he's inducted into the Hall of Fame here in Sebring, alongside some pretty excellent drivers, but without doubt, TK is one of them. And they pulled my leg to name turn three Christensen Corner. That's something which um, you don't expect things like that. But as a race car driver, there, there's nothing better, you know? I mean, it makes me even, ah, in a way, I want to go back racing. It would be nice to go in the car down turn one, into turn one. It's blind, you know, it took fifth gear. You maybe drop to about kilometers, maybe to 230, 240. Go through, you, you know, the last bump, you, you have to keep some throttle, but not full and not off because it's kicking out. And then you come down to the next corner, you can just radio. I'm just about to break for Christensen Corner. That would be fantastic to tell you the team like that, but hey, you go. I'm, I'm fortunate and very happy to have that. And it's a corner I actually, I have made mistakes at, so I don't know if that's why, but I mean, turn three is, is very important.